Hi guys, my name is Anshika Ocha and I was a freshman admit to UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business. I applied as a freshman and we just got the decisions yesterday and I was admitted. So today I'll be going through my application. This is going to be broken into a few parts, starting with my stats, then my extracurriculars and my essays. I'm also going to add in some extra information about my interview, how I did that, what I talked about, and how I prepared for it. So they recently changed the timeline for Haas, so this is the first year that they were allowing freshman students to apply, and I believe they're changing it to be a four-year program, so you may have to do an additional supplement to your UC application if you're applying to the Haas School of Business. I think that my case is really similar to students applying straight out of high school because I was technically at Berkeley for only one semester before applying, so we did get a chance to talk about things we did in high school, the only senior year. Just for some reference before getting into my grades, these are the courses that Haas requires you to take before applying. One of them is Principles of Business, UGBA 10. You need to take Calculus, Math 1A, 1B, 16A, 16B, etc. You need to take Introduction to Economics, either 1 or 2. You need to take Statistics, Stat 20, or you could do Foundations of Data Science plus a Connector course. So I personally did Data 8 and UGBA 88. You need to take English R1A, English R1B, and this is all before being eligible to apply for Haas. Another thing to note is that if you're applying as a freshman, you need at least 60 credits. In my case, I had a lot of transfer credits, so I actually have seniors standing at UC Berkeley because of the amount of AP classes that I took and dual enrollment courses that I took. So I applied with 92.16 units. So let's get started with my stats. So this is what Haas was looking at during my first semester and everything else was in progress for my second semester because that's when I was applying. Right now, I'll talk about what I did during my fall semester, which was my first semester at UC Berkeley. I took College Writing 25 AC and I got an A. It was a three unit class. I took CS 10, which was a four unit class and I got an A. I took EPS 82 Oceans, which was three units and I got an A. I took decal, which was for mental health, and it was one unit, and those are pass, no pass classes, so I passed it. I took UGBA 10, which is one of the core classes that Haas requires you to take to be admitted, and I received an A- in this. And then I took UGBA 191P, which is leadership and develop personal development, a three-unit class, and I got an A in it. So the reason why I took the UGBA 191P is because I was able to network with older Haas students and some of them ended up helping me with my Haas application. And I also wanted to show Haas that I really wanted to start getting engaged with the curriculum early on. So something that I did was take Haas classes before being admitted into Haas. And this is a little tricky to do because you have to know you want to take it so you can enroll in it early on because it's hard to get these classes and they do prioritize Haas students before other students. So as a freshman, I was last priority, though I was thankfully able to get into this class and it was such a rewarding experience. I met so many amazing upperclassmen who later on helped me with my application and I truly enjoyed my experience with Professor Court. It was a really hands-on and amazing class. So my GPA for my fall semester was probably a 3.9 because I received all A's and just one A minus. I'm now going to go over my second semester at UC Berkeley, which is the other grades that they looked at. So I took a CS Scholars class, which was two units, a pass, no pass class, and I passed it. I took CS61A, which is the Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs. It is one of the most difficult classes that I've ever taken at Berkeley, and I thankfully copped an A- in this class. And the reason I took this is because I'm a CS double major as well. And then I took two field study classes. One of them was being an AI and one of them is being a CSM student. They were each one unit and I passed them. And then I took data eight, which is foundations of data science, four units, I got an A plus. And then I took a lecture series because I'm also going for the technology and entrepreneurship certificate. And it was one unit and I passed it. And then I took UGBA 88, which was data and decisions. It was two units and I actually got a B plus in this class. I really did not like that class at all. It's one of the Haas requirements, but it was his first time teaching because the actual teacher was on leave. He had no idea what he was doing. I was able to do that class only because I had support through my friends. And then I took UGBA 190T, another upper day of Haas class because I wanted to show my commitment to Haas. And that's special topics in innovation and design. It was two units and I got an A. My overall GPA 
while applying is a 3.875 because of the one B plus and the two A minuses, and then A pluses don't do anything to your grade. Haas actually says that grades are 50%, and this kind of made me nervous because I did get a B plus, I did get two A minuses. One of the B pluses was in a Haas core class that you need to take in order to apply, and the A minus was also in a Haas class that you needed to take to apply. So this did make me a little nervous, but I guess I'm proof that you don't need the perfect straight A's. You just need to show that you tried, and I really think that my extracurriculars and essays are what helped me stand out. Essays are worth 35% of your application, and activities and awards are 15%. And then you have an optional interview and I did opt in to do it and I would suggest you do it as well. It was a great way to show that I have good comp skills, I'm able to hold a conversation, I know how to talk about myself, I know how to promote myself and put myself out there. And now for my summer classes, I'm currently taking Econ 1 to fulfill that for Haas and my grade is in progress right now. And then I'm taking a guitar class which is pass no pass just for fun. Now that we're done with my stats, I'm going to move into my extracurriculars. So in this portion, they did not limit how much you can write in the description portion, which was a little daunting to me because I didn't know whether they wanted me to be concise, use bullet points, write paragraph format. So I kind of used it as an opportunity to be creative. So I'm going to tell you exactly what I wrote on my application and how I used the unlimited character space to my benefit. And I did not abuse it, but I did write quite a bit for certain things that I'm more passionate about which I think they were able to see. Another thing about the extracurricular section is that you're not able to rank it based on how you want to. It does it automatically from date so I'm just going to read it in the way that they ranked it because of the date being most recent to least recent. Also as a side note they made me put for 2023 as an ending position for everything that I'm still continuing because that was when the Haas application is due. In total, I wrote 16 extracurriculars, and this is including my senior year of high school as well as everything I did at Berkeley. I think something that really helped me stand out is how involved I was even as a freshman. My first semester, I was getting into Berkeley things. I was trying my best to be involved in the community because it is just so big and diverse. And yes, it is competitive to get involved in certain things, but if you keep trying and putting yourself out there, then it shouldn't be too bad. So let's get started with how we have to format our extracurriculars. You have to put down the organization name, your dates of employment, your description, and then the starting and ending positions if it's needed. So my first thing was an award and it was given through the University of California Berkeley RHA, given on 3-2023 to present. And I basically wrote it in bullet point format of what it was. So selected one out of 300 plus applicants. Utilize the resources provided by the Berkeley Dreams Big Award to expand my knowledge and skills in business and computer science, ultimately enhancing my academic and professional development. Developed a network of contacts and mentors through the Berkeley Dreams Big Award program, providing valuable connections and opportunities for future growth and development. For the job type, I put this as awards and honors. The next thing was the President's Volunteer Service Award, X Red Cross, so I put it as an X to show that it came from Red Cross. It was from 2-2023 to present. And as the description, I decided to put this as a paragraph format because it's more of a personal award that I received. So as a blood donor ambassador volunteering with the American Red Cross, I have had the privilege of supporting the organization's mission to provide life-saving blood to those in need. In 2022, I committed over 100 hours of service to the Red Cross, working tirelessly to ensure that donors felt comfortable and informed throughout the donation process. I'm honored to have received the United States President's Volunteer Service Award, PVSA, in recognition of my dedication to the Red Cross and its mission. This prestigious award is a testament to the importance of the work done by organizations and the impact that volunteers like myself can make in our communities. Volunteering at the Red Cross has provided me with a unique opportunity to connect with a diverse group of individuals from various backgrounds and walks of life. I have also had the opportunity to interact with the blood donors who come from all walks of life. Each donor has a unique story and perspective, and I have found that the donation process can be a powerful way to connect with others and build meaningful relationships. Thanks to the Red Cross team, I have developed my skills as a volunteer and made numerous meaningful contributions to the organization. I look forward to continuing to support the Red Cross and its mission in the years to come. So because this award was a little bit more personal to me, I decided to make it in a more paragraph format because I had a lot to say. This is what I mean when I say that I was using the unlimited space to my benefit. And as the job type, I put this as awards and honors. The next thing was Abercrombie & Fitch slash Hollister. 
It was from 7-2022 to present. I'm grateful to have been recognized as the most valuable player at Abercrombie & Fitch for my exceptional customer service, communication skills, commitment to my work, and team player mentality. I was nominated by my peers and chosen for this award out of a team of 100 plus highly talented individuals. Throughout my time at Abercrombie & Fitch, I have consistently demonstrated my passion for providing outstanding service to our customers. My communication skills have allowed me to connect with customers on a personal level, providing them with a memorable shopping experience. I'm dedicated to going above and beyond for every customer, ensuring their needs are met and their expectations exceeded. As a committed team player, I have worked closely with my colleagues to create a positive and supportive work environment. I'm always willing to lend a helping hand and go out of my way to assist my teammates. I believe that teamwork is essential for success and I strive to foster a collaborative atmosphere in which everyone can thrive. Receiving the Most Valuable Player Award at Abercrombie & Fitch is a great honor and it motivates me to continue providing excellent service and being a positive influence on my team. So as my job type, I put awards and honors and this one I also decided to put as a paragraph format because I worked here for almost three years and it was a big part of my working experience and I had a lot to say about how Abercrombie & Fitch developed my communication skills, my ability to work with others and throughout all these paragraphs I really tried to show my business mindset or my business abilities like communication and teamwork and how I emphasize those qualities and appreciate them and always try to improve mine. My next award was through Sandia Laboratories on 5-2022 to present I am thrilled to have been awarded the Sandia Women's Connection Award for my achievements in STEM. The award was presented to me after being nominated by Amador Valley High School's Science Department for my academic and personal achievements in math and science. Out of over 350 students, I was chosen for my dedication and hard work in these fields. Through the Sandia Women's Connection, I have had the opportunity to connect with other women in STEM fields and to learn from their experiences and insights. These connections have been invaluable to helping me navigate my own career path and have provided me with the role models and mentors to look up to. Throughout my academic career, I have been described as a very hardworking student who excels in both group settings and individually. I am consistently positive, speak up during class, and interact well with both my teachers and peers. I strive to be a positive role model and bring joy and happiness to my classes. One of my proudest achievements is maintaining an unweighted 4.0 GPA in high school. I am dedicated to my classes and have never faltered in my commitment to learning and improving in STEM fields. Receiving this award from Sandia Women's Connection is an incredible honor and motivates me to continue pursuing my passions in math and science. As the job type, I put awards and honors, and I really wanted to use this space as another way to share how much I contribute in classes. I was actually nominated for this award through Mrs. Barnett, who was my AP chemistry teacher, and this was during COVID, so I was able to stand out by consistently turning on my camera, voicing my opinions in class, asking how she's doing, and just doing this formed a really great relationship between me and my teacher. So I was nominated by her and the other science department and math departments. So through that, I was able to receive this award. So always maintain good relationships with the professors that you like or the teachers that you like because it can always lead to good things. The next thing that I wrote about is Spotify X UC Berkeley, where I was basically a Spotify ambassador. I put this as 3 2023 to 4 2023. As the description, I used bullet points. Successfully promoted Spotify live events feature to 20,000 plus Gen Z users and non-users through digital marketing tactics such as survey research, content creation in social media channels, and promoting the live events feature on Spotify. Create and post short video form content on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube per week. Record and track at least 10,000 impressions and 1,000 plus views, likes, shares for each post on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, and report metrics to the Spotify team. For my hours, I put four. For job type, it's extracurricular activities. The next one was market games from January 2023. This was from 1-2023 to 4-2023, and I put marketing intern. Here I used bullet points again, supported the CEO to develop and execute marketing campaigns, including blogs and social media posts. Hosted a webinar with OpenStax for 350 plus attendees, gained hands-on experience in digital content marketing, and improved public speaking skills. Research application highlighting companies' impact on business education, leading the market game selection as one of the elite 200 competing for the 1 million prize at the ASU GSV Summit. Promoted the production to five plus professors through interviews and outreach. Hours I put eight and job type is employment. For my next one, I talked about computer science scholars from 1-2023 to 4-2023, and I put this as a peer supporter. Participated in cohort style course discussions, collaborating with peers to share ideas and learn from one another. Attended exclusive CS scholars only seminars for personal and professional development. 
worked with peers from diverse backgrounds and skill levels, gaining a deeper understanding of different perspectives and approaches to problem solving. Engaged in peer review sessions, learning how to give and receive constructive feedback in a respectful and productive manner. Hours I put six, job type, extracurricular activities. The next thing was a club called Ascend through UC Berkeley. It's from 1 2023 to 4 2023 and I put marketing. Here I put attended semi-annual networking and company overview event with seven accounting and financial companies for 200 plus students. Directed research for a client-based consulting project on marketing and education. Attended 15 plus career driven workshops and networking sessions within various fields in business to gain industry exposure. Organized and participated in competitions for 150 plus students interested in financial markets and trends. Hours I put eight, job type, extracurricular activities. For my next thing, I put Bears for Financial Success from 11, 2022 to 4, 2023. I put peer educator, collaborate with a team of peer educators on various projects, including creating presentations, planning events, managing social media, tailor financial education sessions to meet the diverse needs of students, utilizing innovative teaching methods and tools to facilitate engagement and understanding. Serve as mentor for students, fostering a positive and supportive learning environment that encourages active participation and growth. Hours 10, job type employment. The next thing I talked about was Society of Women Engineers from 9, 2022 to 4, 2023. And I talked about how I was on the social media chair. Host weekly meetings for team members, providing updates on upcoming events and fostering open communication. As a member of the social media committee, enhanced internal community engagement and increased SWE's overall digital online reach by eye-catching methods such as interactive posts and targeted advertisements. Hour six, job type extracurricular activities. Next, I put college counseling from 6, 2022 to 4, 2023. College counselor was my title. Mentored and guided high school students to gain admission into top universities. Organized and facilitated 10 plus workshops and seminars, increasing students' understanding of the college application process and improving their chances of success. Developed two outreach programs aimed at providing equal opportunities to underrepresented communities in, co in the college application process coordinated with two local schools to provide resources and support to students from underrepresented backgrounds. Hours eight, job type, volunteer work and community service. My next thing was Biobombs from 3, 2019 to 4, 2023. It was something I started in high school and continued up until now. CEO and founder is my title. Developed effective organizational structure to facilitate seamless tutoring experience, led recruitment, onboarding, and management of 100 plus tutors, overseeing their performance and providing support to ensure consistent delivery of high quality instruction. Designed and executed fundraising initiatives, including a donor engagement program, raising 5,000 plus in funding. Cultivated strong partnerships with 10 plus schools, community organizations, and nonprofits to expand the reach and impact of Biobombs. Hours 12 job type, volunteer work, and community service. The next thing I'm going to talk about is Red Cross from 8, 2018 to 4, 2023. Blood donor ambassadors volunteered 300 plus hours at Red Cross Center plus school club, increased club membership by 225% through marketing initiatives, organized and executed multiple blood drives, surpassing the registration goal by 120% and increasing the number of donors by 25%, 15% in marginalized communities. Facilitated and hosted liaison meetings with regional coordinators, led fundraising initiatives that raised 1,000 plus in seven months, coordinated and trained volunteers to support successful execution of blood drives. Hours 15, job type, volunteer work, and community service. The next thing I talked about is Vijay Computer Academy from 1, 2021 to 8, 2022, a business development intern. Collaborated with the founder to devise a revenue strategy, increasing the company's profit by 20%, led professional development initiatives for women and POC, such as mentorship programs, scholarships, and networking events, created workshops for industries where women and POC are underrepresented, such as cybersecurity or AI, to teach valuable skills and increase their employability. Cultivated partnerships with nonprofit organizations, increasing outreach to marginalized communities by 25% hours 12 job type employment next revit team 8 2021 to 8 2022 director of business development developed and launched a social media marketing campaign that increased user engagement by 20 percent in a month organized a tedx style event which featured 10 speakers and attracted 500 plus attendees identified key trends and opportunities in the educational technology market contributing to the development of a new student focused platform 
worked with the CEO to refine messages and branding for the platform, resulting in a more compelling value proposition and increasing user adoption. Hours 10, job type, extracurricular activities. Here, I really got the chance to add in my business experiences with what I know so far. So I think that really gave me an up in this sense. My last thing was Rejuvenated X Amway, 6 2020 to 8 2022, independent business owner. Founded Rejuvenated as independent business owner, generated 2,000 in sales revenue through effective marketing strategies and customer engagement techniques, grew customer base by 300% with targeted outreach efforts and personalized recommendations, hosted 12 successful product demonstrations and events resulting in increased brand awareness and customer loyalty, mentored two Amway independent business owners, providing them with guidance and support to help them succeed in their own business. Hours 8, job type employment. That was all my extracurriculars. It was a lot, though I really want to highlight how for my awards, I made it really personal because they didn't cap how much we can write and wrote short essays, really short essays just about what I contributed, why I contributed, how everyone else felt about me and how I felt about everyone else, the skills I improved on, like communication, leadership, teamwork, etc. So put everything about yourself out there as much as you can. A lot of people don't think that extracurricular section can be very personalized, but it really can if you try to make it. So definitely utilize that space to the best you can, and I wish you all the best in writing your own extracurriculars. I'm now going to move on to my essays. For Haas, there are two essays that you have to write, and one of them is required, which is basically a why Haas essay, and the next one is a choice, so you could choose between two different prompts. So the first Haas essay question was, Essay A. Describe your post-undergraduate goals. Why is a business degree from Berkeley Haas essential in helping you achieve these goals? So it's basically a why Haas essay, and this is what I wrote about. I stare at the silent black boxes that Zoom projects in front of me, wondering if any of my classmates will respond to my question. A familiar frustration I faced since my sophomore year of high school when the pandemic forced us all online. While virtual education has undoubtedly increased accessibility, it has yet to become a collaborative and inclusive learning experience. This realization led me to found Biobombs, a nonprofit organization dedicated to enhancing students' education. Through Biobombs, I discovered the extent to which human connectivity is overlooked in digital education. Students feel uncomfortable asking questions to anonymous digital boxes and discouraged to learn the content thoroughly. My ambition is to create a new platform that challenges the current online education system and provides an alternative solution that advances collaborative online learning. This includes carving an inclusive space that stimulates in-person relationship building within virtual education. My mission was further affirmed while interning with the CEO of Market Games, a site commonly used for interactive teamwork in principles of business, UGBA 10, to promote the gamification of learning and improve student engagement. I witnessed the difference this platform made to virtual education as students were pushed to communicate with each other through Market Games tools, building genuine relationships despite being situated inside their dorms. As an early stage entrepreneur designing a technology platform, I am also pursuing a secondary computer science major. However, I need a Haas degree to truly understand the intricacies behind an ed tech startup and how to scale an online community in order to make a lasting impact in education. Eager to immerse myself in the Haas community, I began taking upper division courses as soon as I arrived at UC Berkeley. Here, I befriended upperclassmen who shared helpful advice and invited me to join Haas programs. I also met Professor Koti, who personally mentored me in applying design principles to create innovative solutions for online learning. After finding a piece of my community within Haas, I hope to expand it by becoming a full-time student in the undergraduate program. While digging deeper into the Haas curriculum, I became fascinated by the school's commitment to active online learning, as exemplified by the Haas Digital Program. I plan on undergoing the 401 EdTech Explorer to gain insights into the latest simulations, gamification techniques, and practices for online teaching in hopes of improving the development of my own platform. My curiosity peaked after auditing Professor Carney's class, Leading People, and learning about her research on how negotiations over online systems like Zoom affect interpersonal dynamics. Working with cutting-edge faculty like Professor Carney is a crucial next step towards my goal of building a supportive online educational tool. With the help of Haas, I can further unlock my own potential and build a platform that revolutionizes the experience of online learning. I am confident that my future users will learn and make meaningful connections with others rather than see silent black boxes with anonymous classmates behind the screen. So this essay was really personal, especially because I did most of my high school in this Zoom environment and a lot of my extracurriculars and internships and things that I've done revolve around education. I decided to write my essay about how I want to revolutionize online education by making a technology platform, which is why I'm also pursuing CS and business and how with the help of Haas, I can grow this platform, meet more faculty, research, and basically just learn more and change the way online education is viewed. I also showed how Haas is 
similar to me, such as writing about their 401 EdTech Explorer, which is super niche and unique, though when I found it, I found what a great resource it would be for teachers that are aspiring to do online schooling. I connected myself to Haas in that way and really exemplified the different principles that Haas wants you to have. Now moving on to my next essay, which is the last essay. For this next essay, you get to choose what your prompt is. So I decided to choose this one. 40% of employers find it difficult to recruit employees who are adept at critical thinking, communication, and constant adaptability, skills that are critical to future business success. Which of these three qualities represent an area of development for you and why? What steps are you currently taking or planning to develop in this area? Growing up, I never would have expected to become an entrepreneur or a business leader speaking with conviction to teams of people. I had always struggled with expressing myself effectively as a shy child, but as an observant and ambitious person who constantly seeks self-improvement, I decided in high school to change that. During my internship at Vijay Computer Academy, VCA, I challenged myself to step out of my comfort zone, pursuing opportunities to engage with our partners, school principals, nonprofit organization leaders, and executives of female empowerment companies. This is how I met Ms. Shilpa Patel, who spoke with clarity and certainty, energizing her staff who were passionate about a shared goal. Seeing how she led VCA, I was inspired. Now that's a leader. How do I embody that? This marked the start of my ongoing journey and understanding what it means to be a leader using effective communication techniques and how to emulate that in my own life. Since arriving at Berkeley, I have been influenced by many more role models in business through the A. Richard Newton speaker series. They taught me how impactful effective communication can be in leading organizations and ultimately in achieving growth as an enterprise. To exercise these skills, I have joined organizations such as Ascend, where I actively work with teammates to solve complex business problems and navigate various challenges faced by our clients. Taking the lead role in these consulting meetings, I practice building a stronger sense of community within our team by encouraging my peers to collaborate and share their unique insights and ideas as Ms. Shilpa did with her company. This has not only helped us to develop more innovative and effective solutions, but also built trust and camaraderie. Last semester, I took UGBA 191P, Personal Leadership and Development with Professor Worthington, learning how leadership communication encompasses delegating while inspiring and energizing, effectively building trust through communication and nurturing empathy and emotional intelligence. I'm looking forward to taking UGBA 150, leading high impact teams and UGBA 190, leadership communications, where I will learn to assess team dynamics to create an environment that fosters decision-making, innovation, and creativity. Furthermore, I plan to participate in Haas case competitions to practice leading a team and communicating my ideas effectively to others. I will exercise habits like active listening and incorporating team members' perspectives to ensure everyone's ideas are heard and valued. By collaborating with individuals of diverse backgrounds and viewpoints, I will further develop my cross-cultural communication skills. Utilizing Haas's resources and support, I am excited to continue pushing myself to grow as an individual and as a business leader. At the end of my college journey, I will be better equipped to lead my future company and communicate my vision effectively to investors, customers, and other stakeholders. With my commitment to honing leadership communication skills, I'm confident that I can make a lasting impact in the world by creating an innovative ed tech company that democratizes collaborative education for all. So this is my last essay. I'm honestly really proud of the way these turned out because I was talking about something that I was truly passionate about and I was able to connect my first essay to my second essay by talking about this whole idea of an online ed tech company that I want to build. I totally made this personalized and I really tried to play around with my skills such as communication, writing, different styles, making it interactive, making it interesting, and you really don't need to use all these big words to make it sound cool. At the end, it's just really important to be passionate about what you're talking about and having a lot to say about it. The last thing I'm going to talk about is my interview, which is optional, though not really so optional. I definitely suggest doing it if it is optional because it shows a lot about the way you can express and talk about yourself, which is super important in business. Just to preface some of the things about the interview, there's five questions that you have to answer and you have a total of five minutes and they add in an extra 50 seconds there that they don't tell you about, though I wouldn't suggest going above five minutes either way. So in essence, I will be reading out the question and what I said, though in reality, what you do is just go throughout like what you're saying because there's no question one, question two, question three. They just project the question and your face and recording right here, start and stop right below that. So you click start, you can look at the questions while you're responding. So the first question is, why do you want to major in business? And I went ahead and scripted everything that I talked about in my interview right over here. 
Hi, my name is Anshika Ocha and I'll be addressing the first question. My passion in business stems from my desire to create solutions that positively impact society. I'm drawn to the educational technology sector and the potential it has to transform the way we learn and collaborate online. Through my research and past experiences, I'm convinced that we need a platform that facilitates interactive online learning, which will also help bridge the gap between traditional classroom-based learning and the digital age. I'm excited to learn about marketing and finance, as well as to explore topics such as entrepreneurship and creative innovation. A Haas business degree will provide me with the foundation I need to start and grow a successful educational technology platform and to make a meaningful contribution to this sector. With this degree, I can turn my vision into reality. Tell us about a time when your actions motivated and inspired others. For the second question, I want to talk about my experience as a business developer at Revitine. I was working as a project manager with a cross-functional team of engineers, designers, and marketers. We were at the start of building our app. As the project progressed, I noticed team members were starting to lose motivation and were disengaging from the project because of the setbacks we faced. To address this, I took on a more proactive approach in team management. I started meeting members one-on-one -on -one to better understand their goals, interests, and concerns. We fostered a culture of open communication and idea sharing. I was able to re-engage the team and inspire them to contribute. We completed the app ahead of schedule and received positive feedback from the rest of the Revitine members. I'm proud of the role I played in motivating and inspiring my team and I believe that this experience has taught me the importance of effective communication, teamwork, and leadership. Question 3. While you've been in college, what's the most difficult feedback you've received and how did you act upon it? For the third question, my upper division Haas course, Personal Leadership and Development, was incredibly insightful in terms of learning more about myself and how I can be a better leader. When sharing feedback about leadership styles, a classmate advised me to avoid oversharing when leading a team. For example, if I shared how hopeless I feel with my team, it's likely that they will start to feel the same. This feedback was difficult to digest because I thought about how much I valued authenticity in terms of being a leader and how holding back my feelings wouldn't be authentic. However, I came to realize that there is a difference between authenticity and oversharing. I learned that it's important to be mindful of how my words and actions might affect the people that I lead. To act on this feedback, I made a conscious effort to be more intentional with my communication. Instead of sharing negative emotions in a way that could bring down the team, I learned to reframe my thoughts and present them in a more positive light. Receiving this feedback was difficult, but taught me the importance of balancing authenticity with professionalism and being mindful of how my actions impact those around me. Question 4. What leadership skills have you utilized and found the most useful? This leads into the fourth question. I found that authenticity is one of the most useful leadership skills that I possess. By being authentic and showing who I really am, I am able to connect with others on a deeper level, which helps build trust and respect. Hand in hand with authenticity, I found that transparency is another important skill that has helped me to effectively lead others. By being transparent about my thought process and decision making, I've built stronger relationships with my team members and created a more collaborative and open-minded work environment. Through my experiences leading groups, I have become more self-aware of my strengths and weaknesses as a leader. This is why I'm interested in attending Haas, as I want to build on these innate leadership characteristics and hone these skills to be able to do this on a professional and larger scale. I want to master these skills and qualities so that I can achieve my goals of creating a successful startup in the educational technology field and to aspire others to achieve their goals as well. Question 5. Describe a situation where you reframed a challenge or problem into an opportunity. What actions did you take and what was the outcome? For the final question, in my business rejuvenated, I was working on a marketing campaign with my mentors for a new product launch, and we faced a challenge when we realized that our budget was significantly lower than expected. At first, this felt like a huge setback. However, instead of taking the hit, I decided to reframe the challenge as an opportunity to think creatively and come up with a new approach that could still achieve our goals. After a bit of brainstorming, I thought about how we can use this setback as a way to be more resourceful and organically increase marketing instead of spending the money that we didn't have. I took charge of the research for creatively developing social media assets that aligned with our new methodology of resourceful marketing. This reframing resulted in a successful launch of our product, positive feedback, and a more resourceful approach. This experience taught me the importance of staying adaptable and flexible in the face of challenges and to view them as opportunities for growth and innovation. It also reinforced the value of collaboration and creative thinking, which can lead to great outcomes even in difficult situations. Thank you. So, that was my entire interview, all scripted out for you. And obviously I spoke slower and I put more emphasis on certain portions, though I definitely talked about myself, my communication, my skills, how I help those around me. And I really, really tuned in to those questions and how Haas will help me do this on a bigger, more global scale, how I'll learn professionally, grow from these innate experiences and leadership qualities that I have, etc. So I really put myself out there in my interview. I always had a smile on my face and it was super stressful, but once I finished, it felt absolutely amazing. Some overall tips for the interview, make sure that you're 
confident when you're speaking, you speak with clarity, and in the end, you have two tries. The first one is more of seeing the questions. Oftentimes, people do the first one as a way to look at the questions and figure out their responses, and then the second time, they do it for real. For me, I did the first one and I thought it went really well. You basically have 60 seconds to prepare and then you speak. But then after I looked at the video, because you get a preview of your video, I noticed that I was constantly looking to my left as like a nervous tick. And it kind of looked like I was looking at some piece of paper or something else, which should be totally fine if you want to have notes up. But I would suggest having it on your computer so your eyes aren't straying anywhere. But that was just a nervous tick of mine. So I wanted to do it one more time with without looking anywhere else. So the second time was definitely more nerve wracking because that was it. That was the final round and you cannot go any more than two chances and once you submit it it is in and if you want that video removed you can email them but that obviously doesn't really look that great so try your best it is very nerve-wracking this was the scariest part of the process for me because I cannot go back after what I wrote and what I said and what I did but I can always edit my essays edit my extracurriculars etc Good luck to everyone applying to the Haas School of Business. I'm so honored and so excited to start my journey there this coming fall. And I'm so grateful to everyone that has helped me and supported me throughout this entire journey. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll be happy to answer. If you need any help editing your essays or talking about extracurriculars, knowing whether or not Haas is the right place for you, feel free to reach out to me. My email is anshika.oj at gmail.com or you can Instagram DM me. It's just my first and last name, Anshika Ocha. Thank you.